This is the first question in this video on paper 2 questions in the topic of quantitative chemistry or stoichiometry. And the reason it's first is that it introduces a number of important ideas in this area. And it's important that you fully understand them and you can work with them. First important idea is as soon as you see a mass and either a formula like Fe2O3 or the name of a chemical you write down the equation N equals M over MR and that's number of moles equals mass over relative molecular mass. This equation has a number of important characteristics. First of all, it has three quantities in it. And if you know any two, you are in a position to calculate the third. That is why if they give you two of them, in this case the mass and the Fe203, which gives you the opportunity to calculate MR, you can calculate N, number of moles. Now, if they give you this situation, that and that, then either they're going to ask you to calculate the moles, or they expect you to calculate the moles in order to do the question. Write this down, and it may be worth one mark to you just writing it down because the next stage you may make a mistake and so they go back and say well you knew what you were you wanted to do so we'll give you the mark for at least knowing what you wanted to do even if you made a mistake in the calculation the next thing about this is that there are two starting materials and in both cases you get their masses 30 kilograms of Fe203 and 5 kilograms of carbon the question you have to ask yourself is, are they the correct quantities for this equation, or is one of them in excess? Because if one is in excess, then the other one is a limiting reagent. And the limiting reagent will determine the mass of the final products. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this data and determine the number of moles of Fe203 that is present in this quantity. N Fe203 and this is the way to write down number of moles of Fe203 equals the mass of MR and that equals 30,000 over 159.7 Now I got the 159.7 from the MR of Fe2O3 equals 2 times 55.85 plus 3 times 16 and that equals 159.7 and I got those numbers from periodic table in your data booklet. This comes to 188 moles. Now I'm going to do the same for carbon. N carbon equals, in this case I'll just write down the 5000 divided by the number I get from the periodic table and that equals 416.3 moles. You might question whether it's worth doing the 0.3 especially since the Mass of carbon is quoted only to two significant figures. Why bother? Well, I put it in because it's an intermediate calculation. It's not the final figure. So at this stage, it's okay to leave it like that. Now, what we need to do is determine are these the correct amount of moles or is one in excess? So let's look at this one first. That's the Fe203. How much carbon do we need? Well, the number of moles of carbon required equals the number of moles of Fe2O3 
203 times 3 over 2, which equals 282 moles. You can immediately see, without going any further, that you only need 282 moles of carbon. But in fact, you've got 416. So therefore, the carbon is in excess. You may say, well, what if I did the calculation starting from carbon? OK, let's do that. This is the moles of carbon. What is the equivalent number of moles of Fe203? So N, Fe203 equals N of carbon multiplied by 2 over 3, which equals 278 moles. 278 moles. And you can see that you don't have enough moles of Fe203 for that amount of carbon. Therefore, you can say, make two statements. Carbon is in excess. And the second statement, which is usually the one that the examiners want, Fe203 is limiting. A. And that means Fe203 determines the mass of iron that can be obtained. The carbon is irrelevant. And we are going to use this equation again, but just rearrange it in a different format. We are going to look at it from the point of view of M equals N times MR, where N is the moles of iron, and MR is the, in this case, the 55.85 for iron. How do we get the moles of iron? Well, we go to the equation, there's two moles there of Fe203, and there's four moles there of iron. Therefore, number of moles of iron, Fe, equals number of moles of Fe203 multiplied by 4 over 2, which equals 188 times 4 2, which equals 376 moles. Now that's an important figure. We now have the number of moles of this material iron. We go back to this equation and we put the mass of iron equals 376, 376 times 55 and that equals 21,000 grams or 21.0 kg higher. And that's the answer. You may ask why in some of these questions we're using MR instead of AR for an element such as in this question, iron and carbon. The reason is very simple. In these kind of calculations that we're doing, we're using molar quantities, simply because molar quantities are a very convenient way of dealing with chemical analysis. When you're doing one of these calculations, you may get the information from, say, the periodic table, and in the periodic table it is the atomic mass, relative atomic mass, when you put it into this calculation, you would then call it the MR, or the molar mass, of the element concerned. If the question requires you to determine the atomic mass, or the relative atomic mass, of an element, again, when you do the calculation, you are looking at it from the point of view of molar masses. And when you come to the end of the question, and the end of the question is, determine the atomic mass, then you say, this molar mass is the same as the atomic mass.
Having done the previous one, you're now in a position to do this one by yourself. Try it out, pause the video, and then come back and see how I do it. So we see a mass of material and the name of it. Therefore, we are going to use N equals M over M. Secondly, we notice that there are two starting materials and we're given the mass of both starting materials. So we have to decide, is one of them in excess? So let's go through determining the number of moles of copper oxide and number of moles of copper sulfide that they're mixing together. NCU2O equals, there's the 10,000 divided by in this case 143.1 I got that from the periodic table in the data booklet two copper atoms plus one oxygen atom and that equals 69.9 moles and then I do for N copper sulfide and that equals 5000 divided by 159.16. At this moment I'm still using two decimal places here although I can see it's probably not going to be necessary because there's only three significant figures there and three significant figures there but anyway it's only at the beginning of the calculation so I'll just leave it there and I get 31.4 moles here. Now if we go to this one what we want to know is how many moles of copper sulfide is equal to these moles of copper oxide. There's two moles there and there's one mole there. NCU2S equals, of course, half of the number of moles of copper oxide in the reaction, which equals 34.95 moles and that's copper sulfide. So we can see immediately that this amount of copper oxide requires 34.95 moles but we've only got 31.4 moles. Therefore the copper oxide is in excess and the copper sulfide is the limiting reagent. Now, you don't have to write down that copper oxide is in excess, but I'm doing it. Is in excess and Cu2S is limiting reagent. Limiting reagent. And that's what they want to know. If you'd done it the other way around and started with the copper sulfide, you'd come to the same conclusion. Now they're asking for the maximum mass of copper that could be obtained from these masses of reactants. For convenience, I'm going to rewrite the equation to Cu2O plus Cu2S goes to 6Cu plus SO2. We've now shown that the Cu2S is the limiting reagent, and therefore Cu2S determines the mass of copper. So we write down one mole there and six moles there. We know the moles of Cu2S, and therefore number of moles of Cu equals six times the number of moles of Cu2S, which therefore equals six times 31.4 which equals 188 moles. We go back to our equation N equals M over MR and in this case we rearrange it to M and it's the mass of copper we're looking for equals N which is the number of moles of copper times MR, which in this case is the atomic mass of copper, which we get from our periodic table. And that equals 188 times 63.55, and that equals 11,900 G. 
or 11.9 kg. So you can see in this case that they are asking you to use this formula in two different ways. In the first part of the question we used it in this way to determine the number of moles. In the second part of the question we rearranged it in order to determine the mass and they can do that and they could even rearrange it further if they wanted to to get you to determine the relative molecular mass of some molecule or the atomic mass of some element and that's how the examiners give you questions which appear to be so different yet in fact they're not different they're all based around very simple equations and this is one of the equations that they use very frequently. Join others who have found the path to success in IB chemistry is at www.solutionsinchemistry.com and get the full video, four hours of questions and full answers.